Let me take a suckle of my cough fizzle. Okay, well, welcome everyone. My name is Jessica. If you are new here, you maybe you stumbled upon this video. I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this video. Today's video is kind of a personal one and I wanna share with you guys my 10 tips and I have written down notes, curated this, really thought through what I genuinely think has completely changed the game for me when it came to running. This is so personal for me, as dramatic as that sounds, because I'm not an athlete. I have never been a part of sports. Like the closest I came was fifth grade. I played a season of soccer. I sucked at it. I quit it. That's the way I roll. Running was something that when I went to college for the first time over 10 years ago, Oh, over 10 years ago, yikes. That it was something I kind of dabbled in and it wasn't until recently, really this past year, that everything has changed for me and I'm running more often, I'm running way farther distances. I would say when I first started out, I was running like maximum one mile, maximum. I mean, that would be like a killer run to me. Now I'm running around 10 minute miles and usually my runs are like five and sometimes six miles at a time. I cannot believe that's even coming out of my mouth. I never thought I'd be someone that could even say that comfortably and mean it, you know what I mean? And so I know some of you guys are probably sitting there rolling your eyes like, yeah, 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 okay, well, that's not gonna be me. Please hear me out. I really think there are some tips in here that are gonna stick with you, that are gonna linger, and that might change something for you, change your mindset, whatever. So let's dive into my 10 tips for how to run and run more, run better, etc. Number one, it doesn't matter what your background is. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm not an athlete. I'm not someone that has ever been athletic in that way. It doesn't matter. When I started in this past year, two years ago, I had my daughter and I gained way more than I was supposed to. And so I wasn't able to run during the last, well, six months of my pregnancy, basically the last two trimesters because of some complications. And so I just gained more than I had ever anticipated. And so I didn't know as someone that had kind of run beforehand, I didn't know where to begin. And so I was like, well then why even run? So I put it off for a while. So just keep in mind, it doesn't matter where you're starting from, if you are overweight, if you've never run before, if you were an athlete in the past or not, if you are postpartum, all you have to do is just start. Doesn't matter where, we're all starting from somewhere different anyway, so who cares? Tip number two, and this is one that really did change things for me. Figure out why are you wanting to run? I mean, you're not just running just for fun. I mean, come on. Is it because you wanna lose weight? Is it because you wanna be healthier? You wanna feel stronger? Is it because you have a history of something in your family and you know that doing more cardio would be beneficial to you? Maybe like heart disease is common in your family. Maybe you wanna get into running because you know it would help you blow off steam and that's something you need a healthier outlet to do that other than drinking wine. Listen, I, I love wine too. It can be both. <laughs> Maybe you just want to live longer. Maybe you're training for a run. Maybe you just want to get out of the house. I want to tell you a really quick story about something that shifted in my brain. And honestly, this was the switch that changed everything. A little over a year ago, we found a new primary care doctor. We really didn't have one. We kind of floated between. So I was like, okay, we have a daughter now. We probably should like find a real doctor and like stick with him. So we did that and he was going through all the preliminary questions with me, getting to know me and my health history, family history. And at one point he asked one of the standard questions, you know, how much do you exercise? What do you do to exercise? That kind of thing. And I'll never forget his reaction when I said, well, I, I like to run. And he literally, without even looking up at me, went, yes. And I kind of gave him a weird look because that was weird, you know? And he said, sorry, I just, I, I get so excited when patients of mine like to run because it is one of the best things you can do for your heart health. And you know, given the fact that heart disease and heart attacks and things like that are so common, that freaking reaction lingered with me for weeks. And I kept thinking about like, maybe I should run more often and maybe I should get into it and try to do it more because it is so good for me. And I look at my own family history and I'm like, you know, I want to live a long time. And so for me, when I'm thinking about my why, why was I running? Before I was running to lose weight, I was running to look fit and strong. Of course I was wanting to do that. And running helps you do that, obviously. But what shifted is as I thought about my doctor and then thinking about my family history and now I've got my own little family, I was like, I wanna do something for myself that helps me live longer. So yeah, that might also help me be a little more fit and be stronger, but at the end of the day, I would like to live a long life and I want to be around and healthy and able to move when I'm in my 70s, 80s. And so that was something that as I thought about it, it became more and more important to me, I guess is what I'm saying. And it's just a way I'd never viewed running at all, period. As, as selfish as that sounds, I had only viewed running as something I had to force myself to do to lose weight. And now I'm looking at it as something I can do 
that will help me live longer. It helps my mental health. Oh my gosh, mentally it helps me so much. That shift in my mindset has changed everything. As I mentioned in tip number one, it doesn't matter where you're starting from. Tip three, start where you are when it comes to distance and time. If you if you go out for the very first time ever and all you can do is a fourth of a mile, okay, great. You went out and got started on this and you ran and guess what? No matter what, you burned some calories and it's certainly more than you would have burned if you just didn't go out at all. <laughs> and the thing, my husband likes to run too. And again, he was no athlete. We both were in like theater and stuff. The closest we ever came to like athleticism was like dancing. And I don't think either one of us are like the greatest dancers. So he, he brought up, he said his biggest tip would be to not compare yourself to others. So he said, you know, when he was first starting, he just felt like, well, so-and-so, like his best friend is like a freaking marathon runner to the max, does like marathon after marathon, runs like a two minute mile, not literally, but it might as well be, you know? And he said it was so hard to not compare himself to that because like he would hit milestones and be like, oh my gosh, I ran three miles today, I ran four miles today, I ran whatever. But then he would look at his time and it'd be so much slower than his friends. And it's like, you know, at the end of the day, whatever someone else is doing, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that someone else is running a nine minute mile and you're running a 13 minute mile. Who cares? It doesn't affect you. You're doing what you're doing and they're doing what they're doing. There's there's no connection between that, you know? Tip number four, run until you need to walk and then walk until you can run again. This, again, changed everything for me. I can only do a mile at first because I was trying to run the whole thing. The second I started running and then, you know, I was like, okay, I'm a little winded, let me walk for a second, changed everything. Suddenly I was able to do a mile and a half and then two miles and then three miles, four miles, five miles because I was walking whenever I needed to. No one is looking down on you and saying, oh, you walked, you walked five times on this run. No one is watching, no one cares. It is your own journey, your own thing. And even still walking is good for you. So it's not like you're just like stopping and standing there. And so the second I let go of those shackles of feeling like I had to be running the entire time or else it doesn't count as a run, it does still count as a run and you're still burning calories. You're still doing something heart healthy for yourself. Let's say in a given one mile of my run, I would probably run maybe the first half mile and then walk for like 45 seconds until I felt like walking. I'm not timing it. I'm not looking at it and feeling like, okay, I got to run now. No, I just walk until I feel like, okay, let me run again. That's just the way I do it. It's just a mental game for me. So worry less about the numbers. Worry less about how fast you're going. Just get out there, walk when you need to, and run again when you can. And the other thing, keep in mind, no one's watching you. Seriously. No one cares. You know what I mean? Like, I used to be so worried, like, oh, they're going to see me, like, walking. This might be me. Y'all are going to be like, Jessica, you're insane. You really thought that? But I would be, like, see other people out running, and I'm like, oh, like, I'm walking. They're going to think, like, I'm weird for like walking and then running and then walking. No, no one freaking cares about me. Okay, that sounded really dark. And no one knows whether you're on like first mile or if you're on like mile eight, how would they ever know? So who cares? Tip number five, and this is huge as well. Figure out what works for you when it comes to your mindset. Some people do better saying, I'm gonna go out and run for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or an hour, whatever. Others do better saying, I wanna run X amount of miles. For me, I've learned I don't like thinking I'm gonna run for 30 minutes. I don't like it. I don't know why, but it stresses me out because I'm like, I gotta keep running for 30 minutes. I have learned over the past year, I do better thinking about how far I'm gonna run. That's just me. You might do better with time. My husband doesn't mind doing a timed run. Another thing that for whatever reason works really well for me is I, I don't know how to describe this. I like to run out wherever, whatever direction, but run out to halfway of the distance I wanted to go. So if I'm running to run two miles, I would run out one mile away from my house and then that's the halfway point. And then I would just turn around, retrace my steps and run the last mile. The reason that works for me is because once I get to that halfway point, I'm like, oh, well I can just, all I'm doing now is running home. And so it makes the last half of the run so much easier because I'm just running home. And I don't know why that has worked in my brain so well, but it really does. And that for me, was the key, I want you to listen up, are you listening? That for me was the key to running farther and farther and farther. So if you are wanting to add on more distance, run your first mile and just run a half mile out and a half mile back, done. The next time you run, maybe just add on a fourth of a mile. So that would mean that all you're doing is run to that half mile and then run one eighth of a mile more 
and then turn around. You're just running home. Then suddenly you've done one and a fourth mile. The next run do one and a half. So you're running 0.75 miles away from your house and then back. Maybe the perfect example of this is once I like actually really started adding on a lot of distance, it just got easier and easier. And because I was adding it so incrementally, it didn't feel like that big of a deal each time. So I would run like two miles out and be like, okay, I'm gonna run two miles back, but I'm just running home. And then suddenly I've got a four mile run in. Then I would get to the point where I'm like, well, I've already run two miles. If I just run 0.25 more, then I've got to retrace those steps and go back. I will have run four and a half miles. That's a big deal. And so that alone changed the game when it came to adding on more and more distance or more and more miles. And I just feel like you're gonna feel flabbergasted at how much farther you'll be able to run over time if you just tack on a little bit. Now, I, I talked about how that works for me. Some people work better like in a loop. Like my husband would rather, if he's gonna do four miles, he would rather find a four mile kind of loop and just run that instead of going halfway out and halfway back, if that makes sense. So I already spoiled tip number six, but tip number six is add on a little bit each time. So as I mentioned, add on that little extra chunk and then if you're adding on just a, an eighth of a mile each time or a fourth of a mile, whatever works for you, it feels like you're not really changing much each, each run, but it makes a huge difference. Number seven, when I asked on my Instagram, which is, at it's Jessica Braun, if you're curious, <laughs> shameless plug. When I asked my Instagram what questions or topics you wanted me to cover with running, I would say 50% of them were about motivation. Here's the deal. Certain things will work against your motiv motivation. So for me, I don't really follow a lot of fitness people like on Instagram because for whatever reason, that bothers me. I don't know if it's like a jealousy thing or if it's a, I don't, but either way, I can't follow them because I don't like seeing super fit people over and over again, bearing their like perfect abs on my Instagram feed. It, it almost works to my detriment when it comes to motivation. So figure out if that works for you, if it doesn't. One of my friends, it does work for her and it makes her want to work out right then and there. So that's part of it. The second thing is just keep in mind motivation wise, most people don't aren't like, yes, I get to work out today. Yes, I get to run today. I enjoy running, but I'm not like, ooh, let me lace up my shoes. I cannot wait to go on a run. Like, I don't think I've ever felt that way. So my biggest tip is, and you've probably heard this before, get your running gear on, get your shoes on, etc. Go outside, start stretching, because guess what? Once you're outside in the gear and you're stretching, you're gonna end up going on a run. Maybe that run, if you're not feeling it, is shorter than maybe you wanted, but at least you got out there and you went on a run. Sometimes when I'm feeling a run the least, I end up running the farthest. And usually it's because I just didn't feel like it. Maybe the first part of the run, I'm just like, oh, and it feels like freaking drudgery, you know? But then usually I just kind of catch my wind and I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, oh, I'm feeling good. And then also usually my mood has elevated like 11 fold. And another quick little thing here, and this isn't one of my tips, but I definitely suffered from some postpartum depression. And I will say running was one of the things that even though my runs, especially right, you know, close to after I had her were really short and not very long, it really, really helped you guys mentally. And especially now being quarantined at home completely changes the game when it comes to my emotional health. Number eight, make a good playlist. Take the time, sit down and make a really killer running playlist. Maybe you like really upbeat music. I certainly do. But then there are sometimes I go on a run and I'm like, I'm just really thoughtful today. I want some like freaking thoughtful, pensive music. I have a playlist for that too. So take the time to make a really good playlist because that makes a huge difference. Maybe you're someone that doesn't like to run to music at all anyway. Keep that in mind. Maybe you just wanna run and hear the birds chirp, then do that. But I really do think if music is something that motivates you, it totally, like there are certain songs that when I hear them, I'm like, yes. And I just feel like suddenly reinvigorated mid, mid run. Number nine, invest in your gear. Now it doesn't mean you have to go drop a hundred dollars on leggings or on shoes, but find stuff that works for you. I have gone, I have tried a lot of different running clothes. For me, I've discovered, I've tried a lot of running shoes, a lot of running clothes over the years, and I've discovered what I like. And it's taken a lot of trial and error. You know, I've learned that I really like really breezy, simple Old Navy Target like workout tanks. Those work perfectly when I'm running. They're kind of fluttery. I can still feel a breeze, but I don't have to break the bank to buy them. But I do have to break the bank to buy my leggings. I've discovered, I've tried a lot of Target and Old Navy leggings. 
they're just, they end up rolling down on the top. I literally cannot stop thinking about it and messing with it the entire run. And so literally a few weeks ago, I was like, you know what, I've had it. And I ordered more of my favorite Lululemon ones. Those puppies are stupidly expensive, but I've had the same pairs for four years. They're still running strong. And I was like, I'm gonna invest in like one or two more pair and I should be good to figure out what works for you. My favorite running shoes, I used to get really bad shin splints. I realized it was my shoes. I don't think that's the case for everyone, but for me, that was a big part of the problem. And so I, I have really high arches. So I invested in really good shoes for high arches, solved the problem. My favorite shoes, if you're just curious, are the Nike Pegasus. 36 I think is like the number I have. Um, I love them. I'm probably gonna buy them again when I need to replace them here soon. I also love the Mizuno running shoes. That is one of my favorite, favorite brands for running shoes. I've had Brooks as well. The ones I had were really, really structured and I just didn't love them. So if I ever did Brooks again, I'd wanna find ones that are a little more comfortable. Number 10, find an app that works for you. If you find an app that you really like, it can motivate you. I use the Nike Running Club app. It's free, I've used it for years. And what's cool is it can track, you know, GPS track where you're running, which is really neat to see. Like even when we've traveled and I've run a little bit, I can see the maps of where I ran like in Europe and stuff. It's so freaking cool. But um, not only that, of course, it tracks your pace and your distance and when you slow down, etc. If you have an Apple Watch, it could track your heart rate and keep that in there, your average heart rate. Plus, it'll track like how long you've had your shoes. So for me, I feel like I just bought these Nike running shoes that I'm using and yet it tracks how many miles I've, how many runs I've done on those. And I'm already getting to the point where I'm like, whoa, I need to replace these soon. And I was already feeling the wear and tear and running shoes is something I don't mind replacing more often than not because I do feel like they don't perform as effectively as when they're newer, you know? So, wow, that was a lot. And this was a longer video than I anticipated as freaking usual, but I hope this helped you. Even if you're someone that has never ever run before, there's no one out there making any specific rules for what a run is supposed to be like. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's a realization I've had and that's what a lot of these tie into. You don't have to run the entire time. You don't have to run a certain distance or a certain pace to be a runner. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe. If you are new and you stumbled upon this video, I do lifestyle videos, makeup and beauty videos, cooking videos, all kinds of stuff here on my channel. I hope that you'll subscribe and stick around. It makes my videos a little more easier to find. And as I mentioned earlier, I'd love to say hi to you in the meantime on my social media. It is at It's Jessica Braun everywhere. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.